Hi folks, Chris here. Thanks so much for joining us for today's episode of The Daily. I'm so thankful that you've welcomed me into your day, your home right now. Welcome to uh, our playroom right here. Uh, You can't see the mess on the floor, which is perfect. Uh, We are so encouraged by the stories we're hearing of how God is using this in your life. We are so honored that we get to be a glimmer of encouragement, that we might uh, help you focus on God through your day, be one of the ways that you connect with God, because man, I need it so much right now to connect with God multiple times throughout the day, to keep the peace, to keep the joy, uh, and we're going to talk about other things that God calls us to grow in in increasing measure as well, because Josh introduced us yesterday to the fruit of the Spirit. It's a list of things that we are to grow in increasing measure in, that there should be more and more evidence for these things in our life as we grow and mature in our walk with Jesus. And so that should be as we pause and reflect on our lives that we should see more evidence and and definitely other people looking at our lives would be able to say that these things are true of us and and they're almost becoming more true, if you will. And, And so today I get to talk about love. What bigger topic could there be? How many Bible passages do you think of when I see where does the Bible talk about love? It's all throughout it. It's the thread that is major and huge. You might think of Deuteronomy 6, known as the Shema. Jewish people recite it uh, every day and have for many years. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. In Matthew 22, where Jesus points back to that, he's asked what the greatest commandment is, and he says, well, love the Lord your God, and adds to it, love your neighbor. You might think John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, gave his one and only son. 1 Corinthians 13, the love chapter. If you've been to a wedding, I'm sure you have heard it. Uh, just packed full of gold nuggets. Uh, what about John chapter 13 that says how others will actually know we're followers of Jesus is by how we love that we would be living such radical lives of love, so selflessly giving, not looking to our, to keep to ourselves or not looking at what we're getting in return, but that's how other people will know we are followers of Jesus. The, the, the theme of love, it, it's the story of the gospel. That, that's the foundation of our faith. And here we find it in Galatians 5 verses 22 to 23, one of the fruit of the spirit that we are to grow more evidence for the longer we have been following Jesus. That as we walk by the spirit, we're supposed to look more and more like Jesus. That's what we strive for. And so he's the perfect example of our love, which which fits so well here because the Greek word that's actually used for love is agape. Most of the New Testament was written in Greek and, and there, they had a number of different words for different types of love. And the word here is agape love. It's, it's really a God perfect love that only a holy, perfect God could love with such consistency. It would be, it's such a radical love, such a um, not self-seeking love that is talked about here. What a high, high calling we get of what it means to be people that love and love like Jesus. And the picture in the Bible is, and, and follow me for this, it's, it's, it's like holding up a mirror. Right, we, we only love other people because of how Christ has loved us. So, so earlier today, I, I was going for a drive and, and our car has a sunroof in it and I love it. Never had a sunroof before, for this fairly, uh, I guess we got it fairly recently, fairly new to us vehicle. And so the sun was really warm, was gorgeous, loved it so much. Um, uh, and, and if I was talking to you right now and had you propped up on the car dash and then I held up a mirror to catch the sun coming through the sunlight, Picture yourself being blinded by that light right now. That's what our lives are to be. 
that that we are just just a mere pointing people to Jesus. And it goes both ways in that we receive Christ's love and then we pivot and we love radically out from there knowing that we so don't deserve how lavishly God places his love on us. And so we just go out and radically love other people. And as other people look at us, we say, no, it's not me. You got to know Jesus. Right. Let me introduce you to someone who, who I'm only just showing you a glimpse of with, with the best of my abilities right now. Right. That's what we strive for is that when people experience our love, we get to just point them to the better picture of who Jesus is and his love that is even more perfect and more complete. And so as we start every day, here's what I think we need to do. We need, we, we need to focus our attention on God. Right. We, we need to have a, a full picture, the fullest picture that we can of just how much he loves us to look full in his wonderful face at the start of every single day saying, God, this is who you are. This is who I am. And to look full in his loving face that he pours out on us and we don't deserve it. And then we go out on other people and love on other people. It's, it, it, it's not a warm, fuzzy feeling love. It, it's a deliberate choice kind of love. It's a love that's not keeping a tally running. It's not looking at whether we think they can give it back. It's, it's not keeping track of, well, well, I love them before and then they did this or, or they didn't respond how I wanted them to or they thought they should. So now I don't have to do it. No, it doesn't do anything like that. If, if, Oh, I'm so thankful God doesn't do that with us. So we go and love other people and we do it in an increasing way to look more and more like Jesus so that we get to point other people to who Jesus is. So here's the question I want to want to leave us with is, as you love, what is your motivation? Is your motivation what you might receive in return? Or is your motivation that Christ has loved you and that frees you up to love without worrying about what comes back. Because you've already received all the love you need from Jesus Christ himself. Let me pray for us. Father, <laughs> Father God, thank you for your good, perfect love. That is far more consistent, far more perfect, far more no strings attached than anything we have or will ever experience on this earth. Thank you that you invite us into this mission of loving other people as a reflection of who you are, as, as a response of how you have loved us, that we might point others to you. God, what a mission you've given us. What a high calling to strive for, God. Thank you for your love that is there even when we don't get it right and how you keep calling us into doing it better and doing it more. We love you so much, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you back here tomorrow as we continue on with the fruit of the Spirit.